Morris Witness. Hello, Mark. Hi, how are you? All right? Yeah, not too bad, Mark. Is this a new new, new number? Uh, oh, sorry, have I rung the right Robert? Yeah, Robert, yes. Um, studying you, Jehovah's... This is... Studying in, in Joy Life Forever, Chapter yeah, 7. Yeah, this is, your, this is your new number, Robert. This is your new number. Yeah, but OK, your number's come up and... It doesn't say Mark on the phone, so I just wanted to... Oh, right. No, no, no. I, I, this has been the same one. Maybe because you've got a new phone, you've not put ah. my name in. OK. No problem. Mark from Forfar, right. isn't yeah, it? Yeah, no, that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, Mark How from are you, Forfar. Are you, are you all right? Yes, not too bad, thank you. Yeah, good, that's OK. Good. It's it's Mark from Forfar, isn't it? Mark from where, sorry? Forfar. No, no, I'm, I'm in sale. Oh, OK. Right, OK. You remember you, ask, you, remember you were asking me to give you a call regards the Enjoy, uh, you know... Yes. Um, enjoy Life Forever brochure. Yes, that's right. Yes. We were going to look at yeah. Chapter 7. Yes, yeah, you were saying Chapter 7. Yeah, OK. Um, right, yeah, let me OK, just, that's, that's yeah. fine. Sorry, my mix-up, my fault... No, no, don't worry, don't worry. So, um, so you've obviously been able to look at the website as well to find the brochure. Yes, I've downloaded the brochure. Um, Very I, good, excellent. I have downloaded some of the videos, but I'm afraid I've got mixed up as to which one is which. Um, oh, don't worry about that, don't <laughs> worry, don't worry. No, no. I mean, I mean, yeah, what, what they've done now is they've, they've done it like, um, that's the study brochure, and uh, for, for somebody might we say we might meet, mm -hmm. and they want to do the first three chapters, yeah. and then they decide if they want to carry on in the brochure, and then yes. you can see on the brochure you've got different uh, chapters after that, yes. haven't you? Yes, that's right, yes. yes. So that's what they've done. Um, you find the website OK to get around yes. and have a look at things? But I, I have to go to a place where there's free internet. Um, I've been there today. I buy a coffee and a breakfast, and I'm, I'm there for about seven, eight hours. I do wow. voluntary work uh, a few days a week. But um, if I'm not working, I go to this um, a place where free you internet. get free, free internet, yeah. So I have to buy uh, a breakfast, and I buy a coffee, and you get unlimited refills on the coffee. So it's quite a good deal. Great, isn't it? That's really good. Uh, it was section four that really puzzled me. It says Holy Spirit, God's active force. That's... Okay. Should we take a look at yeah. that? Is, is that yeah, okay? Yeah, of course. Yes, yes. You, you, yeah, let me just go. I'll, 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 I'll bring it up on my phone as well. Just a sec. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking at it now, uh, Robert. OK, shall I read it? Uh... Uh, yeah, yeah, that'd be lovely, yes. And then yeah. I can read some later if you want me to. OK, um, well, it's only a small section. Uh, for Holy Spirit dash God's active force. Just as we use our hands to do work, Jehovah uses his Holy Spirit. The Bible reveals that Holy Spirit is not a person, but the force God uses to get things done. Read um, two verses and then discuss these questions. God will pour out his Holy Spirit on those who ask for it. Do you think Holy Spirit is a person or is it God's active force? Why do you say that? Jehovah uses his Holy Spirit to accomplish, accomplish amazing things. Discuss this question. What are some of the ways in which Jehovah has used his Holy Spirit? Son. So that's one way of Holy Spirit work. That's one way 
the mm-hmm. Holy Spirit working. Mm-hmm. And then, and then there's another scripture in the Psalms. I think it's 104, where it says, "You send out your Spirit, and they are created." So Jehovah can use oh. His Holy Spirit. Let's have a look at that. Oh, Psalm 104, verse 30. I think it is. Let me have a look. Yeah, okay. You should say what your, your says, that'd be good. Psalm 104, verse 30. Yes, you send forth your, your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the earth. Yes. So that's another, another way, you know, that I would say, obviously, is... Um, Holy Spirit. What, what else would you say as well, Robert? Um, well, I would see the Holy Spirit as having the four aspects of personality. Um, the first is a rather technical term, self-cognizance. It basically means you recognise your own existence. You speak and you say, I and me. Yeah. So in Acts 13.2, the Holy Spirit says, Separate unto me, Paul and Barnabas, for the work to which I have called them. He uses the word, the pronouns me and I, which, you know, you couldn't say that electricity or an inanimate thing like a rock could say that. A lump of concrete can't say me and I. Electricity can't say me and I. Only a, a being who has self-cognizance, recognises his own existence, can say me and I. Okay, all right. So, uh... So obviously that was the uh, one of the illustrations used, wasn't it? I'll say something else that was, that's interesting, though. You know, like that God has a personal name, Jehovah, mm-hmm. and Jesus, um, His Son has a personal name, Jesus. You'll never find the Holy Spirit has a name, personal name. Don't you think He's called Holy Spirit? No, that's not his, that's not a name. I would say that's what it is, personally, you know, because um, sometimes it even speaks about, you know, the uh, Holy Spirit came upon me and I spoke, things like that. So I suppose thought it's interesting that the Holy Spirit doesn't have a name, but God does and his son does. Well, I'd, I'd say Holy Spirit is a name in Acts 13.2. As they ministered to the Lord and fasted, the Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called them. So Holy Spirit seems to be used as a, uh, as a designation of, of, of his, what, what, who he is, his, his name. How you're called, how you're referred to is your name. And anyway, um, the four aspects yeah. of personality are self-cognizance, okay. yeah, on. Yes, carry on. Yes, the, the ability to say me and I, self-cognizance, self-will, which we find in Acts 13, 4, two verses later. So being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. So the Holy Spirit has self-will. He chooses to send out Paul and Barnabas. All right, And again, Holy Spirit it seems to be used as a name here. Um, he, he, the Holy Spirit has intellect in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 12 and 13, because he teaches... And I don't see how you can how you can teach if you don't have intellect. And perhaps most significant of all, he has emotion. He can love, Romans 15 verse 30, where we read of the love of the Holy Spirit. And he can also be grieved, Isaiah 63, 10. You can't grieve electricity. Okay, okay. Well, if you think of it, think of it either, I'm thinking of it now in another way. If you think of Jehovah God, um, um, he's not omnipresent, he, so he's not everywhere, but he exists in heaven. Um, I, okay, I, so I read that in, in your Insight in the Scripture, Volume 1, page 969, it shot me, Jehovah is not omnipresent, the Father is not omnipresent. Okay, yeah. so... You, I know you were saying that about electricity going out, but one way that you, you would be able to get things done is by sending his Holy Spirit out. It's in that way that Jehovah then gets things accomplished. What do you feel about that? 
Um, well, that really ignores the fact that the Holy Spirit has the four aspects of personality. He has self-cognizance, which means he can speak and say, I. Uh, Acts 13.2. He has self-will. He, he decides to send out Paul and Barnabas in, in Acts uh, 13.4. He has intellect. He can teach in 1 Corinthians 2.12 and 13. And he has emotion. He can love, Romans 15.30. And he can be grieved, Isaiah 63.10. So the Holy Spirit is not like a lump of concrete or like electricity because he has the four aspects of personality. The Holy Spirit must be a he, not an it. He's not an impersonal thing like a stone or a rock or a lump of concrete. Right. So you don't view Holy Spirit like as something that Jehovah God, you know, you know can send out, like in, to, to fill, say, a body and, some, and they do something. You think, you know, because if you look at um, some, I mean, sometimes Holy Spirit is called God's hand or God's finger. So if you look at, say, <clears throat> Psalm 19.1. Well, Jesus is called the Word of God, so words are not persons. So if Jesus is called the Word of God, that, that means that Jesus is not a person. Well, J Jesus definitely is a person, as, as you would no yeah. doubt agree. Yeah, of course, of course. You know what I mean? But uh, just let me look at Psalm 19, well, that's in my, my man, let me just have a look at it. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> okay. So he says, the heavens are declaring the glory of God, the skies above proclaim the work of his hands. Now, would you not say then when it says his hands, because he's not a physical person, person, his spiritual person, his hands would be another word for Holy Spirit, like his, you know, the skies, the things he's created in the sky, the work of his hands, or his Holy Spirit? No, it's just an idiom, it's just an idiomatic phrase, so the creation account is just being um, told in simplified terms. Um, but, I see what you mean, yeah, yeah, so you're not, so would you, what, what do you think then is, so you, you obviously obviously believe that, uh, that the Holy Spirit is a person, don't you? Yes, yes. I'm, I'm obviously, and, and that's just an obvious, how, how we feel it's different in that it is the, you know, what Jehovah uses to accomplish the things he, the things he wants to do. We'll probably never agree on that, you know, but that's all right, because um, everybody's allowed. Uh, I agree that the Father uses, you know, the Son is sent into the world by the Father to do the Father's will. And the Father yeah. also sends the Holy Spirit, just as Jesus also sends the Holy Spirit. I have no problem with that at all. So, yes, I believe the Holy Spirit is sent to do various things that the Father um, tells him to do. I have no, no problem with that. But wow. that doesn't make the Holy Spirit uh, an impersonal it. There's no, there's no verse in the Bible that says the Holy Spirit is an impersonal force. No verse calls the Holy Spirit God's active force. Genesis chapter 1, verse 1 and 2 says the Spirit of God in the Hebrew, not God's active force. There's no verse in the Hebrew or the Greek that says God's active force. And the Holy Spirit has the four aspects of personality. He has self-cognizance. He can speak and say I and me. Self-will, intellect and emotion. He can love, Romans fifteen thirty. He can be grieved, Isaiah 63.10. I mean, there's other aspects of emotion that he has, but mm. you can't say that of an impersonal thing like electricity or a lump of concrete or a rock. A lump of rock, electricity, cannot love and cannot be grieved. Only a person can. And the argument's the fact that we're filled with the Holy Spirit, um, I think, is a very weak argument because we can be filled with the fullness of God. Um, I think that's in Ephesians 3, 3 19. Yeah. And we can be filled with the fullness of Christ in Ephesians 1, 23 and 4, uh, 4 10. So again, those are just idiomatic phrase. Um, yeah. Paul is poured out in Philippians 2, 11. Jesus is poured out. He says he's poured out like water in Psalm 22, 14. Well, it's, it's prophetic of Jesus, referring to Jesus's death on the tree. So... Um, Yes, the Holy Spirit is poured out 
in Acts chapter yeah. 2, but so too is Paul. So too is Jesus. So does that mean that Jesus being poured out is not a person? Is Paul not a person because he's poured out? Well, no, no, obviously they are, they are, they are people, aren't they? Hmm. If you go back, though, to even like, you know, like the Greek and the Hebrew words, um, ruach and numa. Now, they, yeah. they, they are referred to like as active force, aren't no. they? No, no, no. There's no verse in the Bible calls the Holy Spirit God's active force. It's the Spirit of God, not active force. Um, so have you found that chapter, though, you know, when you look through it, did you find it good to look at, you know, did well, you find it interesting? Well, yes, it, it certainly had interesting bits in it, but I, the, port, the, the point I had a bit of problem with was this reference to the Holy Spirit. Um, certainly had some interesting parts elsewhere, but I mean, if the Holy Spirit is a person, how would the Bible have to read to convince you the Holy Spirit is a person? How would the Bible have to say, what would the Bible have to say? How would the Bible have to say it to convince you? Well, obviously, you would, you would have to know, you know, one of the thoughts I was saying before about having a name, and obviously, I believe the Holy Spirit is what it is, rather than having a name. And, and you know, like, the, as I said before, the Hebrew words, Re, um, Ruach and Numa, they've always just been translated spirit. But spirit of when, God. And then when somebody's but, been filled with it, like Paul and Barnabas and etc., then they've been able to do something. See what I mean? Not this, that they became filled with Holy Spirit and then they were able to, then they were able to do something. Well, I so don't... said, like Mary, you will be you know, filled with spirit and you'll have God's son. So that, that's not like a person like Jesus or Jehovah. That's like something would happen. Um, when you talk to people, and you dialogue with people, words have to have a certain meaning. Because if words have no meaning, you, you can't dialogue with someone. Yeah. If you're there yeah. talking and I'm going, it's impossible for you to have a conversation with me. It's also impossible to have a conversation if you use words in a certain way and I use words in a totally different way. Yeah. So um, um, if you said, Robert, um, can I come down and visit you? Uh, and I said, yes, of course you can. Do you want your tea with milk and sugar? Well, if I give you that answer, I've totally misunderstood your question. Uh, and if you say, um, if you say something in the Bible, and I totally misunderstand you, it's, imp it's impossible to have a dialogue. We, we, got, we, we got to use some common vocabulary and have common meanings. So what is a person and what is an active force? What's the difference between those two? Could you just define them for me? Yeah, for me, a person is an individual person. Like I said, you know, it says in First Corinthians fifteen forty four, if there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual one. So we can recognise a physical body because I am me, and you are you. And we're all individuals. Right. So in the spirit, in the spirit world, there must also be. Well, you can recognise that's Jehovah God, and then you recognise that's Jesus, and you recognise. That's Paul, the Apostle Paul. They all must have a distinct spiritual body, just as we have a physical body. Um, well, um, 1 Corinthians 15.44, the word for body is soma in Greek. And when it's applied to a human being, it always means a physical body. It never means a body made of spirit or a spirit body, ever. Gundry wrote a book about this, um, which I read years ago. Um, now, spiritual... Think, but, but rather than thinking of, like, somebody who wrote this, I'm just thinking, like, the Bible was inspired. So if you, if you like, just read the verses, like, it is so, you know, a physical body is raised. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual yeah, one. Yeah, but spiritual does not so, mean spirit. Spiritual is plumaticos. It's a different Greek word. 
to spirit, which is pneuma. So it's not saying it's going to be raised a body made of spirit. If it wished to say that, it, the word spirit would be used, not spiritual, and a different word would be used rather than soma, body. The, the, the meaning of 1 Corinthians 15, 44, it is so in a natural body, it means it comes out of the wo woman's womb, we're, we're born out of our mother's womb, uh, in our natural bodies, which are under the curse of sin, but it is raised, this is at Christ's second coming, when we'll be given um, our spirits or souls, will be reunited with our now glorified human body, and spiritual is plumaticos, it means spirit dominated, but body there, soma, always means physical body. It cannot mean a body made of spirit. Soma has to mean um, physical body. Now, um, all right. Well, let's. If you think of them, well, Hebrews that's Hebrews nine. That's two thousand oh. years of church his two thousand years of church history. The people who actually speak Greek and Hebrew. Well, this is written in 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 Greek, isn't it? But the people yeah. who are the scholars are all agreed that this is saying it's going to be raised in a physical human body. Catholic, Protestant, Orthodox, everyone for 2,000 years says that. And if you disagree, you have to have a good reason why. You can't simply say that you don't like that, and therefore you're not going to accept that, because that's not good enough. You need to give proof, evidence. Um, and then it, Go on, yes, I'm listening. Yeah. Um, so, you know, everyone in the Christian church for 2,000 years has interpreted 1 Corinthians 15, 44, to say it's going to be raised in a physical body that's spiritual, plumaticos, spirit dominated, by the now glorified human. It does say in the Bible, though, that flesh and blood cannot inherit God's kingdom. That's verse 50. Now, this I yeah. say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Here's the context nor does corruption inherit incorruption. So it's saying that flesh and blood, glorified flesh and blood, because the context for this passage, the previous 10 verses, is the resurrection of the dead when the body is going to be glorified. So glorified flesh and blood are going to inherit the, the kingdom of God. But unredeemed, unregenerate, okay, people who've died in their sins, they're not going to inherit the kingdom of God. So it's only going to be those people who are going to be changed in glorified human bodies that are going to inherit God's kingdom. Verse 51, Behold, I tell you a mystery, we shall not all sleep, that means death, but we shall be changed. Change refers to the resurrection when we'll be given glorified human bodies. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, that's the second coming of Christ, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. doesn't mean changed into spirits. we become non-human because the watchtower says... The 144,000 are going to be like Jesus. They'll be non-human spirit creatures. It's saying that we're going to be changed in that we will have glorified human bodies. For this corrupt corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal must put on immortal immortality. So it's talking about the glorification of the human body. It's not saying that um, um, people are going to have to be changed into spirit creatures in order to uh, enter the kingdom of God. You would, you, admit, you would admit that God's not made of flesh and blood or any glorified flesh and blood. But God's a spirit. Uh, God is spirit, but 2,000 right. years ago, God took yeah. into his nature, um, the Son of God ah, took right, into his nature a human, a right. human body, and he's perfectly right. and eternally united now with that human body. He hasn't discarded it. Now, in Hebrews chapter 9, then, in verse 24... Yeah. When it says that Christ did not enter into a holy place made with hands, but, which is a copy of the reality, but into heaven itself, so that he would now appear before God on our behalf, he couldn't have been either a physical body at that point, could he? Because he couldn't have appeared before God, who's a separate person, his Father in heaven, who's a spirit. Jesus would have to be a spirit, wouldn't he? No, Jesus, Jesus resurrected to heaven in the same body that he resurrected in. I, I feel the resurrection is, is very important um, that we get this right because it, it's, it's kind of um, Mark, it's the, it's the basis of the Christian faith, the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We get, we get that wrong, we get everything wrong. Um, but, you, but you 
Well, you're surely not saying that God's in heaven with a glorified physical body, are you? I believe Christ is, yes. Jesus Christ is. I don't believe the Father has a physical body. I don't believe the Holy Spirit has a physical body. But when the Father sent the Son into the world, um, it says in, uh, I think it's the next verse actually, yeah, uh, verse 5, um, therefore, when he came into the world, I think the Greek says entering into the world, he said, quote, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. In burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin you had no pleasure. Then I said, Behold, I have come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do your will, O God. So a body you have prepared for me. So when Christ was sent into the world by the Father, a physical body was made for him. Now when he died, that physical body ceased existing. Christ is not just a physical body. He has a human spirit or soul as well as a physical body. That soul or spirit went somewhere for the three days of his death. And then at his resurrection, his now glorified human body was reunited with his soul or spirit. It is a little complicated, I certainly will no, agree. I'm, 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 I'm understanding where, you, where what, what you're, I'm understanding what you are yourself thinking. But just to think that Jesus will be in heaven, I mean, how is he going to come at Armageddon to end the world, you know, with all, all the wickedness when he's in a physical body, he needs to be in a spiritual body the, the angels used used to materialize into a spiritual body and then dematerialize didn't they mm. um well ho hold on mark i thought you believed that christ's second presence was from 1914 is that yes, second yes, presence yes, on the yes, earth or in heaven no no that's right yeah but but what i'm saying is all i'm trying to say is that in heaven he would have a spirit body he wouldn't be a glorified physical body that's 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 the, the only difference i'm having really well i certainly b believe that christ is spirit he's divine spirit the same spirit as the father and the holy spirit so in his deity he's spirit christ also has uh, a second spirit believe it or not uh, his human soul or spirit but he has a human body now you said that christ is going to come back but I thought you teach that the second... No, no, no. no that... in, the, in the sense of... No, in the sense of... When we, when we say that, we, we mean in the sense of Armageddon. As he says in the book of Revelation, he'll come back, um, you know, and there'll be, um, you know, buying Satan for a thousand years, etc. Um, so it's, in that, it's, only in that, it's, in, it's only in that way I'm meaning. What I'm saying is, from 1914... He's been made, he is king of the kingdom, so I'm not confusing you there. When I say that, he'll come back, I just mean he'll act again, you know, with the Armageddon. He'll, you know, bind Satan for a thousand years. That's all I meant from that. Um, do you believe that the second presence of Christ from 1914 is a second presence on this earth or a second presence in heaven? From heaven, his kingdom is from heaven. Right, so the second presence of Christ, you believe, is not on the earth. It's a second presence in heaven. For, yeah, his, his kingdom is, is heavenly, so that's where his kingdom is. Although you his do... Kingdom's heavenly. Although I have read in your reasoning book, I forget well, the page... He, well, he, he is head of the Christian congregation here on the earth, so we obviously, with Holy Spirit, etc., and the preaching work, he is with us all the time, up until, you know, he'll be with us all the time, you know, and, and, and help us through our, and help ones survive Armageddon. So he, he's, he's, even though the kingdom is in heaven, he's still here, actively looking after the congregation here on earth. You say he's here. So is Christ's second presence here on earth, or is Christ's second presence in heaven? Well, even though he's in heaven, he can still look down to the earth to, to um, look after the interests here on the earth. Where, where, so even though he's in heaven, he's still looking down on the interests here on earth. Where is Christ's presence? Is Christ's presence in, from 1914, is he present on the earth or is he present in heaven? Presence, presence means where you are, where you abide, where you exist. Well, he is in, hev he is in heaven, is in the kingdom, in the spirit, as a spirit being, but 
he is looking down on the head of the congregation here. On but here. that doesn't answer the... Well, with respect, sir, that doesn't answer the question. The word presence means where you are located. So you've said the Father is not omnipresent. Obviously, Jesus is not omnipresent, if the Father's not omnipresent in your theology. No. Um, I do believe Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are omnipresent, by the way. Um, so there's a little bit of a difference there. But the word presence means where you are located. So if you believe Jesus is not omnipresent, where is his presence, which means where he is located from 1914? Do you believe he's located in heaven, or do you believe he's located on earth, or do you believe he's located in both, or no, or neither? Where? He's located in heaven. Right, so the second presence of Christ in 1914 is not on the earth, it's in heaven. When it says the second presence, he is located in heaven. Right. I think we've drifted... I think we've drifted right, a little. Okay, yeah, let's <laughs> go back to where we were then. Okay. Yeah. Um, so we were talking about the Holy Spirit, weren't we? Yes. Um, wh what would the Bible have to say to convince you the Holy Spirit is a person? After all, there's no verse that says the Father is a person. Or there's no verse that says... Um, well, actually, there is. Hebrews 1.3. The express image of his person. So Jesus is the express image of the person of his Father. So actually the word person is used. I think it's in the King James Bible. I don't know if if many other Bibles use the word person. Um, who, I'm just looking now. What, what verse did you say? One, three, did you say? Hebrews, Hebrews chapter three. 1, verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and the express image of his person. So, okay, it does call the Father a person. It says that Jesus is the image of the Father's person, which means Jesus is another person. I don't know yes. if how, how many Bibles read quite like that but um what would the bible have to say how would the bible have to say it to convince you that the holy spirit is a person and and what is a person to you a person to me is an, an individual you know that has like i'm in a i'm in a body you're in a body we're all individual and I can understand the thought of the uh, electricity. It reaches out, and uh, wherever it reaches out, it might turn a light on, or it could power a tool. So yep. the Holy Spirit, I can very happily think of it as Jehovah's Holy Spirit, as uh, something that he sends out to accomplish something, because when the Holy Spirit comes into somebody, it enables them to do something. Like, for example, Samson. You know, he ran with all those heavy gates on his back yep. all the way for miles. He wouldn't have been able to do that on his own strength. He was given Holy Spirit that, that enabled him to do that. So that's how I view Holy Spirit. Did I hear you say a person has to have a body, a physical body? No, a physical no. body or, or uh, I mean, obviously I'm going to say a spiritual body, a spirit body in heaven. Because, you know, wh wherever it might be, um, uh, uh, but you have a body that's individual to you, like Jehovah God's got a body individual to him, and Jesus has got a body individual to him, so they recognise each other. When you say body, what do you mean by body? Well, when you think of... The only way you can describe things is as we see, which is physical, so we've got a body where... I've got two arms, two legs and a head, and this is me. And you are separate, and you've got two arms, two legs and a head. Mm. Now, when Jesus went back into heaven to appear before his Father, even though they're in a spirit body, they can they see each other. So they recognise, that's Jehovah, that's Jesus, that is... Um, Angel Gabriel, you know, so they all know who they are individually. Well, I certainly believe there is an eternal distinction between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. I don't believe that the Father is the Spirit. I don't believe the Father is the Son. I don't believe the Son is the Holy Spirit. I believe they are distinct, and I believe they're eternally distinct. Um, I mean, what's the difference between a person and an active force? force obviously like you think of if you think of electricity like as we were speaking about that before 
it just runs along the line and goes wherever. And, and then when it hits a light, it can make that powerful. If it's a power tool, it makes a power. So it can make things work and happen, even though there are long distances away. But that's not the person. The, the, the power plant is the one right back at the power plant is the, where the energy comes from. Well, I, I believe that all things originate in the Father and go to the Son and then to the Holy Spirit. So I believe the Father is the originator of all things. I just think we're, we're playing on, on words here. What exactly, why isn't, why, you say the Holy Spirit is not a person. I'm still trying to, def I mean, what is a person and why do you object to calling the Holy Spirit a person? A person to me is somebody who has self-cognizance, he can speak and say I and me. He has self-will, he has intellect, and he has emotion. And the Holy Spirit has all of those. But do you not think, though, that if you think about it, you know, for example, like the idea of the Trinity, you'll never see the word Trinity in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You'll never see that word itself. It's, it's as if it's been a, a man-made thought. You know, from, from from even like Egypt and Babylon, where they all believed in Trinity and gods of a Trinity. No, 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 they, they did not. They believed in triads, not Trinities. There's a big, big difference between the Christian Trinity and what was taught in Hinduism and, and, in, and in Egypt. Um, it is important to be accurate when dealing with other people's beliefs. Well, the thought of the three in one, but can you, can you not maybe see that they adapted an idea of three in one. Um, and maybe three that will make the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit all three. Three what? Well, three, three, uh, like, a, like, a, like a, a triad or a trinity. Like what's, what's actually gone before without the Bible actually saying it. Because the Bible, Moses never said, you know, that there was, you know, this, the, the, none, of, none of the Bible writers have ever said that it's part of a trinity or the word trinity has never appeared. Well, the word... Even the Catholics say it's a mystery. I'm, I'm not a Catholic. Um, there were several beliefs that arose in the 2nd, 3rd and 4th century. Okay, Arianism was one. You don't find Arianism in the Bible. That's what you believe. Arianism taught that the Father is God and the Son is... Um, a created being who's not God. Modalists, or modalism, arose. They taught that Jesus is the Father, so when Jesus is praying to the Father, it's Jesus' flesh praying to Jesus' spirit or divinity. And then there were the Trinitarians who arose, and there were also other beliefs that came along. There were people called adoptionists, for instance, who were midway between the Arians and the Trinitarians. They believed that Jesus was born a man, but then at his baptism, he was adopted into the Godhead. Um, interesting enough, Pastor Russell possibly was influenced by that belief because later in his life, Pastor Russell taught in Brian Bible Teacher's Manual, page 454, that Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. That was official Watchtower teaching a hundred years ago. Jesus Christ became the Almighty God at his resurrection. That was also taught in um, other literature, such as the Finnish Mystery, page 15 and page 240 says Jesus Christ is almighty God meaning he became the almighty God at his resurrection so all these beliefs arose in the fourth or fifth century because obviously the Bible is the word of God but people started arguing about what the Bible said so everyone's belief okay the, the codification of what you believed whether you were an Arian a Trinitarian a modalist or an adoptionist, all of these beliefs are man-made systems that arose in the, you know, third and fourth, fifth century. So, you know, big deal. The word Trinity isn't in the Bible, but neither is Jehovah's theocratic organization or what you believe, which is Arianism. And what the oneness Pentecostals believe, which is called modalism, that word's not in the Bible. So that's a very weak argument. You can't say the Trinity's wrong because the word Trinity isn't in the Bible, because then your beliefs are wrong, because you, you're, an, you're an Arian. And your word, Arius, Arian, that's not found in the Bible. I see. So, so how then, if someone... 
somebody, you know, like say, obviously you're a person. How can you then divide yourself up and be in all different things? Well, I don't know what you mean. I don't know. I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. I don't know what you mean. I'm sorry. You have to explain right, that. Right. Right. You know, like Holy Spirit, you're saying it's a person. He is a person. If yes. You're, if you're saying it's a person, won't it have like a, de a defined body, like we have, like I'm Mark and you're Robert, etc. Even though it's spirit, how can it then divide itself up to do all these things in different places? Because, you know, like in uh, Acts 1 and verse 8, yep. it says, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, yep. and you will be witnesses of me in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, different parts of the earth. Now, if Holy Spirit was a person, it wouldn't be able to divide itself up into all these people to preach everywhere. Oh, right. So you're saying that the fact that people are indwelt by the Holy Spirit proof that the yeah, Holy so, Spirit is not yeah, God? because they will receive all the power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. So, so if the Holy Spirit's a person, a person can't be divided like thousands of times into different people because it's a person. Well, but in the verse it's saying Holy Spirit will, will come upon each one of them and for okay. them to do something. Right, well I certainly agree that around the world today um, the Holy Spirit indwells millions of people around the world. I don't believe that that is dividing the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is omnipresent. But I can use that argument you've just given to prove that the Father, according to what you've said, can't be a person and neither can Jesus. Because if you go to John fourteen twenty three, Jesus answered and said to him, If anyone loves me, he will keep my word and my Father will love him. And we will, first person plural, come to him and make our home with him. So according to this verse, John 14, 23, the Father and the Son are here prophetically stating that from the New Covenant onwards, they're going to indwell millions of Christians around the world simultaneously. We will come to him and make our home with him. But can't, they, can't Jehovah do that through his Holy Spirit? No, no, no. The Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit indwell millions of Christians around the world. I actually changed the Alpha course. I went on an Alpha course, the last church I attended, three meetings at Plymouth Christian Centre in 2012, and they more or less told me, don't come back, we don't, we don't want to see you. But on the course, yeah. apart from being told that Jesus made two atonements, one on the cross, a physical atonement, and the second atonement in hell to the devil, and apart from also being told, this wasn't official Alpha teaching, this was the lunatics running the Alpha course, I, I was also right. taught that um, Jesus is the Father. <laughs> I complained to the he table head, who was a woman of course, because women run everything yeah. now in the evangelical churches, she said I was wrong, Jesus is the Father, and I said that's modalism, she didn't even know, know what I was talking about and couldn't be bothered to find out. I then complained to another woman, the head of the Alpha course at Plymouth Christian Centre, I think she was yeah. called Liz. I think the table head was Janet, and then Liz was the head of the Alpha course. She said, oh yes, Jesus is God the Father. Um, I then wrote to the pastor, that, no, there was an elder passing by. I was yeah. furious, so I cornered him, stopped him, and said, I'm furious. I mean, told modalism that Jesus is God the Father. He didn't even know what I was talking about. He was that ignorant. Um, I then wrote twice to the pastor of Plymouth Christian Centre, which is an Elim Pentecostal church. Uh, um... I forget his name. He didn't even bother to write back. I then wrote to the general superintendent, the head of the denomination for the Elim Church, John Glass. He said he'd look into it and get back to me. He never did. Um, but one of the things on the Alpha video from 2012 was that I think it was lesson three or four. They said that when a person becomes a Christian, they're indwelt by the Holy Spirit. And I wrote to Nicky Gumbel, the head of the Alpha course, at Holy Trinity Brompton. I said, that's actually incorrect, sir. Um, in Christian Trinitarian theology, the doctrine of perichoresis means yeah. that um, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit indwell a Christian. Because if you were just indwelt by the Holy Spirit and not also by the Father and the Son, 
um, you'd be dividing up the nature of God. You'd be having separation within the nature of God, which goes against the fourth point of the Athanasian Creed, not dividing the substance. And they change the Alpha Course. So if you listen to the Alpha Course at that seg section now, um, they say, right. and uh, they actually repeat, he, Nicky Gumbel repeats himself. He says it twice. I want to make it very clear. We believe that Christians are indwelt by the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Um, which is clearly what the scripture teaches. In John 14, 23, the Father and the Son are going to indwell millions of Christians around the world. Um, uh, if you go to 1 Corinthians, no, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. Okay, um, the word union in union is not in the Greek text. If you go to the kingdom into linear, you'll find that union is not in the Greek text. Oh, yeah. Examine yourself as to whether you are in the faith. Prove yourself. Do you not know yourself that Jesus Christ is in you unless indeed you are disqualified? So Christians are going to be indwelt by Jesus Christ. And if they're not indwelt by Jesus Christ, they're going to be disqualified, i.e. they're not going to be genuine Christians. And then the Bible also talks about the Holy Spirit who is in you in 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? So the Holy Spirit is in you, 1 Corinthians 6, 19. Jesus Christ is in you, 2 Corinthians 13, 5. There are more verses, by the way, than this. And the Father and the Son are in, also indwell us. John 14, 23. So if you argue that the Holy Spirit is not a person, because how can he indwell many people around the world simultaneously? Well, he can do that because he's omnipresent. If he wasn't omnipresent, he couldn't do that. But Father, Son and Holy Spirit do that. So if you're going to argue the Holy Spirit is not a person because he indwells... Um, millions of Christians simultaneously around the world, um, then the Father and Jesus Christ cannot be persons either because they do the same. They also indwell millions of Christians around the world simultaneously. Right, well, I was just reading in the New World uh, version, I was, I was looking at when he said that, he says, in union no, with you. No, 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 it's not in the Greek no, text. I knew, I knew you were going to say that. That's why yeah. I, it's I not in the, that's an addition to the text. Day. 2 Corinthians 13.5 does not have the word union. That's an addition to the text. It's not in the Greek text. It's not saying we're in union with Christ. It says Christ is N. Epsilon nu. He is inside our physical bodies. So if Jesus indwells millions of Christians around the world, and he does, and you argue that the Holy Spirit can't be a person because he indwells millions of Christians around the world, then Jesus isn't a person either according to your own logic. Okay. So that's, that's um, been a good conversation, though. At least we've gone through yes. that, you know, what, what that was saying to do. Yes, thank you. Know? Thank you. So, sorry if I've been yeah, a bit forward. I'm, I don't wish to be rude. I hope I haven't been too, too um, no, no, forward. No, no, don't worry. You've not. You've been great. It's been really nice. Okay, thank you. All right. Um, Thank you, Robert. I can speak again, Mark. Do you want to book up for next week, or do you want to just text me? Um, I'll, I'll text you. That would be better. That would be better. And then, you know, let me know which uh, part of, you know, what the lesson would be. You know, which one. And that'd be great. Okay. Just give me, make All sure right. you give me a day's notice, but it would oh, be I best... I realise that. Yes, I realise. Yes, I uh, do. I understand that. All right, that's All right. wonderful, Robert. Thank you, Thank Mark. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Okay, bye. 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 That was Mark Sale Congregation in Manchester.